determining order of reaction. So a zero order with respect to a particular reactant. What does that mean? If changing the concentration of a reactant has no effect on the rate of reaction, the reaction is zero order with respect to that reactant. Next is first order. If changing the concentration of a reactant produces directly proportional changes in the rate of reaction, the reaction is first order with respect to that reactant. Second order. If changing the concentration of a reactant leads to an increase in the rate of reaction equal to the square of the change, the reaction is second order with respect to that reactant. So here we have the change in reactant, the change in rate of zero order reaction, first order reaction and second order reaction. So if we double the concentration of A, there'll be no change for a zero order reaction. In a first order, the rate will double and a second order, the rate will increase by a factor of four. If you triple the concentration of A, again, no change for zero order. The rate triples in a first order and the rate increases by a factor of nine in a second order. It's the square of the change, so the square of three is nine. And if the concentration of A quadruples, again, no change for zero order. For first order, the rate will quadruple times four. And for a second order, it'll increase by a square of the change. So four squared equals 16. So let's look at an example question. You'll be given data from an experiment and you'll have to deduce the order of reaction with respect to each reactant. So we start by looking at the NO2. So you choose a reaction where one of the reactant changes in concentration and the other stays the same. So for the NO2, the concentration doubles here, but for the fluorine, the concentration stays the same. So we can look at the effect of doubling the concentration of the NO2. So we double the concentration and the rate of reaction doubles. So now we look at the fluorine. So we'll choose a reaction where one changes and one stays the same. So for uh, this reaction here, we double the concentration of fluorine and the concentration of NO2 stays the same and the rate doubles. So as you double the concentration of NO2, the rate increases by a factor of two. And the concentration of the fluorine is doubled, the rate increases by a factor of two again. So the rate, or sorry, the reaction is first order with respect to both NO2 and F2. The overall order of reaction is a second order reaction. And we can write the rate expression, rate equals K, concentration brackets NO2, concentration brackets F2. So in our next example, we're given the information about the temperature of the reaction, which is 1280 degrees C, and all reactants and products are in the gaseous phase. So we have experiments one, two, and three. We have the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, the concentration of hydrogen gas, and the initial rate. So we're gonna look for an experiment where one changes and one stays the same. So for the nitrogen monoxide, we are doubling the concentration. The concentration of the hydrogen stays the same and the initial rate increases by a factor of four. Next, we'll do the hydrogen. So for experiments two and three, we double the concentration of hydrogen gas. The concentration of nitrogen monoxide stays the same, and the rate increases by a factor of two. So as the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is doubled, the rate increases by a factor of four. As you double the concentration of hydrogen, the rate increases by a factor of two. So the reaction is second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and first order with respect to hydrogen. The overall order of reaction is a third order reaction. And we can write the rate expression, rate equals K, concentration of the NO raised to the power two because it's second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and then the concentration of the hydrogen. And we look at one more example. So here we have the initial concentration of X and OH negative and initial rate of reaction. So again, we're gonna look at an experiment that changes and one that stays the same. So for the uh, concentration of X, here experiments two and three, it's doubled. And here it stays the same for OH negative. 
and the rate of reaction doubles. And then we do the same for the OH negative. So experiments one and two, we are doubling the concentration of OH negative, the concentration of X stays the same, and the rate stays the same too. So there's no effect of doubling the concentration of OH negative. So when X, when the concentration of X is doubled, the rate increases by a factor of two. When the concentration of OH negative is doubled, it has no effect on the rate. So the reaction is first order with respect to X and zero order with respect to OH negative. If doubling or changing the concentration has no effect on the rate of reaction, then it's zero order. The overall order of reaction is a first order reaction. And when you write the rate expression, you don't include the zero order reactant. So it becomes rate equals K times the concentration of X.